I really enjoyed those stories. Um, that was planned for getting the what Stuart called the academics on uh, and then getting the the story from Annette. That was fantastic. Um, I is bringing me back to the days of being a one person. I technically am one person now, but a one person partner manager. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask you, Will. So when you look at the model, actually, do we have, do we, can we bring that image back up on screen? Do you have it? I got it. See if, yeah, you, can, I, see if you can find it. When you were running your one person partnership shop, like where would you, where would you map, where would you map yourself? Was this at uh, Vidyard? Yeah, there was Vidyard and Mailshake uh, that we can chat through. Um, yeah. And this is the solution partner. Um, that's yeah, what I started with. Partners. Yeah. Yeah. So I did, um, I worked with a hundred agencies at Vidyard and we were in the managing stage, uh, getting into the measuring stage uh, because the program was pretty well built, but it was now time to bring, you know, those 100 agencies uh into bringing revenue and of course us bringing them revenue. So that was very interesting because that was my first partner role, partnerships role. And I had basically no context to partnerships before that. Um, so yeah, I was managing. Did, did you, did you just kind of like, like have in your mind where you were or did you, did you have some kind of maturity model or some kind of map to place yourself and your partners? Nothing like this. So this would have been helpful, but um, we actually built our own like enablement specific maturity model of the things that we wanted to build and what we needed to get to each of those stages. Um, but it was purely focused on what enablement programs do we want to build? So that would be, you know, basically maturity model inception of um, maturity model within a maturity model, uh, because even the building and managing stages, I feel like those are the most robust and that's where so much can be built in the way of enablement assets and onboarding programs and all of that. So uh, yeah, we had a bit of our own maturity model, but that was probably six to seven months of me being in the role that we actually had that. So uh, we've got some, we got some questions for uh, those of you hanging around here with us. Uh, Get, how about like, what do we want to do? Like a thumbs up or something or uh, what, what kind of indicator do we want to do, Will? Yeah, well, I think it would be very interesting to see where everyone else is in the maturity model. Where would you identify yourself? You can just put the name into the, the chat. Uh, just or a number start. one to five. Yeah, Yeah, or one to five. Uh, we'll we'll de decipher it. Um, if you're in discovery, put a one. If you're in building, put a two. Managing, put a three and so on. Curious to see where you're at. And we have some other questions that I'd love to dive into to learn more about where- Oh, look at that. Look at that. We got a one followed by a two followed by a three. Are we going to get a four? Are we going to get a four? We've got Are a four. We, we got a four, a four going. No, no fours, I guess. Oh, okay. Back to one. Oh, we got a four. Priscilla just had to get in there just a little too soon. Otherwise, we would have had the perfect one, two, three, four all in sequence. Okay. We nice. got another discovery. Four. Who's that for? Okay, Zift. Zift is at a four. Measuring. Uh, let's see. Discovery. Okay, this is interesting. There's a <laughs> Priscilla. It's okay, Priscilla. <laughs> it's all right. I like it. You got in there first. You had uh, Owen. Uh, Owen was right on your heels. Um, so it looks like we have one, two ones. Uh, we probably should have done a poll. Uh, a four, a three. Oh no, three ones. Okay, so we got some early, early. Um, early programs here. So I'm curious, um, Will, for, for you or really for anybody here, yeah. ha having this kind of model roadmap, like what do you think is the most, because I, I initially, I'm always kind of skeptical of this kind of thing, right? Jared's like, oh no, this is super helpful. We should build it. It's going to be really valuable for us. I know it was valuable when, you know, for me when I was at Drift. And I always feel like things that are internal facing can sometimes get too much attention. So it's like, oh, we're going to build this so we can figure out where we are. But then when you talk about sharing it with your partners so that they have a clear, sharing something like this with them, showing, look, here's how you get to the next stage with us. 
so that they mm -hmm. can kind of see like what's possible. I don't know if those are two different things, internal facing versus external facing in terms of kind of mapping the, the program. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would say uh, that might go to the maturity model inception uh, again, where I think you could have your own, you know, business goals with your partners and the end state that you want to get into and then also the stages to get there with that specific partner. Um, but I think a model like this could be used really well for the internal planning, but then also when you're communicating to your partners to really show, hey, we're in this stage in our program to really level set those expectations where you know, we're not at the optimizing stage. Uh, you know, we're still in this discovery phase and that's going to help the partner understand, okay, well, this is what I'm getting myself into because but I think a lot of programs uh, do a disservice of to their partners, especially on the, the agency or solutions partner side. It is, it's not very clear how well developed the program is. And those agency uh, partners are you know, looking at 100 different tech companies. They see that there are these 100 different programs. They all kind of look the same. And you know, the conversation generally goes the same way. And I don't have a gauge of how I will be able to expect, you know, the growth of the program and the available resources, the available support, and ultimately the success that I'll get in that program. And so, although, you know, there might be some negatives to showing, you know, hey, we're only in the discovery phase or, or whatever it is, which yeah. might put some partners off. I think it helps you organize your time more efficiently as well, because then you're not having this friction against these partners that have these different expectations of, you know, the a previous experience where it might've been at optimizing and you're at discovery. So um, that's how I would say it could be used as both an internal resource, but then an external one as well to communicate and work with partners. So let, let's get a couple more questions here. Uh, I want to, I want to learn a little bit. And then, and then I want to bring, uh, I want to bring on stage anybody, um, really anytime if you want to come on and just chat a little bit about where your program is and uh, you know, any, any questions or thoughts on that. Not like, not like Will and I are, are here to give you answers, but for all of us to just share and discuss openly. Um, so let's do a little, uh, a little like thumbs up in the chat. Are you, we'll, we'll put it this way. We'll do a yes or no. Why or why or N are you experiencing internal friction or resistance to maturing your partner program? I want to get a gauge that'll, of uh, what. Yeah, what? That'll, that'll be in the way of the like the resources that you're trying to get. Um, you know, cl cross collaboration across your teams because we talk a lot here about um, organizing the internal teams with the partners. You know, setting OKRs. So I would love to get an understanding of you know, are you facing that internal friction um, across the different teams with a, a yes or a no or a Y or an N. So Eric, you said no. And Allison, you said yes. That's, that's interesting. I'm curious what other people are thinking and what is might be, what might be the most common. Less resistance and more so not fully bought in on the long-term vision. Yeah, that's something right now, especially anything that's long-term. Uh, yeah. Like what are some of the, yeah, there's probably some of those easy win. Like what are the quickest wins you can get to, to kind of establish that you can bring some value and get more buy-in. It's funny. Um, we just got a sneak peek, a little shout out to Crossbeam for their forthcoming study, uh, the state of the partner ecosystem. We had a little sneak peek into some of that data just today before it comes out. And it's just really interesting that there's kind of these, there's these simultaneous things going on that people working in partnerships on the one hand, they're like, partnerships are kind of in a bad place right now. On the other hand, individually, they feel like their, their partnerships, you know, they're doing a pretty good job. They're hitting their KPIs. They're creating a lot of value. Yet they also feel that like the other departments of their company, maybe you're not so much. So you kind of have this thing where like partnerships, people are like, Hey, it's tough out there. I'm doing pretty well, but maybe everybody in my company doesn't quite get that or agree with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I wonder how much of moving to those next model, uh, those next you know phases in the model is, how much of that is about the other departments being willing to play ball with you? Yeah, well, well uh, definitely a lot of the information that's in the model is um, making sure there is that alignment, especially when it gets into 
measuring um, and managing as well as when it really starts. And then measuring is, of course, where you're operationalizing like the, the KPIs. I'm curious, um, Eric, if you're willing to come up on stage, I'd be curious to get your take on why there isn't that internal resistance um, and if there was anything that you did. And, and no, no stress, you can put it in the chat. But if you want to come up on stage, there's a, a raise hand button um, at the bottom uh, right beside all the emojis and whatnot. We'll get you on stage if you want, and we'll uh, chat through the experience that you've had, and uh, maybe it'll help Logan and Allison in the chat as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be really that'd be really cool. Yeah, anyone anyone beyond that discovery stage, if you want to raise your hand, I would love to just hear like what would you say to people who are earlier, you know, who are at discovery or who are, who are a stage or two behind you, um, if you're up for it. Oh, we got him. Eric. Hey, uh, oh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Hey, uh, yeah, this is Eric. Um, so I actually just joined a, a new company and um, that was actually one of the decisions, decision points for why I joined. Hmm. Um, they, I mean, I report to the CEO, so that, that also helps. Um, I think I also have a, a seat at the table with the rest of the management team. And they were all bought in um, to why partnerships and whichever kind of path we end up taking will um, will have like an impact on the company. What's the um, what's the main focus right now? Is it tech partnerships? I think you answered in one of the earlier sessions, but I don't yeah, remember it's what it's agency perfect. right now. Um, and I'll we'll get back to tech because. Um, my company is kind of unique. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize the camera wasn't on. Um, my, my company is pretty unique where they, they actually built, um, 70 integrations, tech integrations, um, but no go to market strategy It's sort of like, you know, build it because the, the client wants it. Um, the funny part is that, uh, right now I'm, I'm making the assessment that it's probably not going to drive as much revenue. It's more of like, you have these integrations to close the sale and the agency uh the agency program will probably be a lot more productive in generating uh net new sales and then i'll probably come back around to the tech partner program once the agency program is kind of up and running are you coming from you said you chose this company deliberately because of the support for partnerships approach are you coming from yeah. a role or a company where that was not the case uh, I was coming actually from a role where I was doing the same thing. So I actually got to build the partner program from scratch. Um, but I think I spent a lot of time trying to convince internal stakeholders that I wasn't going to be a threat to them. In fact, I was going to actually help them achieve their KPIs or OKRs. Um, it was just, I was spending a lot of time convincing them that that's what my, that's part of what my job was um, being in a partnerships function. And what kind of information did you uh, bring to them to be like, hey, here's, you know, the one, some of the reasons why we should continue to work together and, you know, why you shouldn't provide any resistance. Um, but then also some of the key things that you're actually going to work on within the program. What were some of those data points, um, even at a high level of, you know, how it's going to help them be successful? Yeah. Um, so pretty easy. Um, every quarter... I was delivering X amount of deals and the amount of pipeline that was increasing as a result of us engaging with partners was going up. So um, basically grew the just source pipeline from zero to 25 million on an annualized basis. Um, we were also able to show that um, the average close rate, now this is in quarter, uh, was 35 to 50%. So any deal that came that was partner sourced had a 35 to 50 percent chance of closing uh that was better than even some reps and their close rates oh yeah <laughs> uh Very and then powerful. and then the other part was um average deal size was going up um so it you know it was averaging in the thousands to then the ten thousands to then uh, i think uh at the time i was leaving it was maybe like 35k or 40k nice um, and yeah, yeah it's hard. Case. It's hard to argue when when you've got the clear, when you've got the clear numbers, uh, you know, that are affecting revenue, close rates, all that stuff. Some for yeah. for some of the partnerships where that's not as easy, or like the 
you know, the influence or those kind of, you know, fuzzier things. Do, do you have mm-hmm. any experience there with, with proven so, value? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, this is, this is kind of a nuanced thing. I think I, I may have put it in the comments, but um, you're going to actually have a lot of partnerships that are going to be one-sided and you actually have to understand that no matter how hard you try, um, it's never going to be uh, equitable. <laughs> and, and and you need to be okay with that. And so once you kind of understand that, um, that's the that's the state of the relationship how can you still operate within that to maximize the opportunity um, because that partner still maybe has a lot of value so I, I won't mention the the company but i can tell you that we had one of those where it was clearly not um not sort of a two-way mutual relationship and so we leveraged them in a way because they um, they just had a bigger name than we did. They had a bigger brand and they had a bigger reach. And so our goal was, okay, we'll just use them so that we can be associated with this larger brand and greater reach to kind of build out our relationship, showing that uh, we, we can hang with sort of uh, the bigger boys who, who've come before us. So give, give, uh, give one piece of advice to some of the people hanging in here who are at the... Uh that discovery phase, that earliest phase to, to maturing the program? Um, I mean, basically ask the question, you know, are you in the business of helping us drive pipeline branding or, or, you know, um, feature enhancement for our, whatever our offering is. Right. Um, yeah. Hopefully they're, they're pretty honest with you about that because um, there are companies that are just built like you feed me, I don't feed you. And that's perfectly okay. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, thanks for, uh, for popping on, popping on stage. Sure. Uh, if we have any others who want to, who want to jump on and chat about kind of where your program's at, um, raise up your hands. We'll, we'll put you on. I don't know how it's happening. Someone is magically doing this behind the scenes because <laughs> I, I can't see what's going on. Somehow Eric appeared. I don't know if other people are, <laughs> but if, if you do raise your hand, I'm just going to assume that you're going to magically appear on the stage yeah. as well. So, um, um, Allison, I think your perspective would be interesting as well. If you're comfortable coming up on stage, new leadership throughout the organization, and that's why you're uh, seeing some internal resistance. And maybe we can chat through some of those things that like Eric was talking about um, that you could potentially bring up, especially if there's um, any of the preconceived notions or just lack of understanding, um, then I think that could be um, really insightful to get your take. So hey, Allison, hey, hey, was, see, it magically happened again. <laughs> so tell us about um, the program. And then you said le- new leadership throughout the organization. Um, the program was it already established and then that leadership change happened or you're kind of new with the new leadership. Tell us about what the, the situation is. Yeah, so I started at Wonderkin about six or seven months ago. And um, at that point in time, uh, our CEO who got us to the uh, over $100 million in in revenue departed. And we've recently had uh, new leadership come in and a bunch of different changes that have um, that have come from that from top down. Um, so I report into the CRO currently, um, and, you know, strategic alliances, while it was, uh, there's a lot of great structure put in place and a lot of great things happened. They've either fall, you know, have become dormant or they just need to be dusted off and, and revamped. Um, we're at a point in our company where a lot of changes are occurring. We haven't been so friendly to work with in the past. We don't have uh, open APIs. We, uh, you know, there's just a lot of of limitations to both a technology partnership, and then we also have a full service offering. So Mm -hmm. it also limits our, our ability to work on either side of of partnership. So at this point in time, uh, it's been decided that there was a, a large focus on, um, 
integrations that are important for retention, but maybe not for new business uh, and, and looking at additional partners to bring into our ecosystem to really build it out. So we can do both um, for our process, like for our new business arm and also for our existing business arm. So do you feel like you have, oh, go ahead, Will, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I can see how if leadership is coming in, then the APIs are hard to work with. And there's that service team internally that they would be resistant because they think, you know, either it's a threat or it's not going to work as well. Um, so that that's really interesting. And you mentioned there were partnerships and it sounds like it might not have been a formal program because you mentioned you're in the discovery phase. So um, is that just because of all the changes? You're like, OK, we got to start at square one again or. Um, what, why is it, you know, in that stage now, if there were relationships in the past? Yeah, I think uh, it's funny because I remember partnering with Wonderkind when I was at a former uh, employer and um, they had a really great, strong team. And unfortunately, that team just, um, you know, moved on, went to different places. There were changes in um, ideas of how partnership should run. So um, a lot of great things were started back in like the 2019 period. Um, but over the past uh, two, three years, there's been shifts in priorities and ideas and leadership that have really just Taken, taken their toll on the partner program. And, and now uh, I'm a small team. Uh, and when I say I'm a small team, I mean a, a team of one. So I'm trying to work to um, discover partners and start to rebuild some of those um, partnerships. Which, which uh, internally, if you were to you know, say, where am I going to make the most progress fastest? Would you think it would be on the integration side with tech partners working with your product team? Or would it be more on the, it sounds like there's maybe some competition on the services side. What, what would you, what would you see as like the lowest hanging fruit to get things going? Um, I think the lowest hanging fruit right now is just finding partners where an integration is not needed, but they enhance our, our offering um, and looking to, uh, looking to those other ISVs out there to help with uh, brand awareness, to help with marketing, to help with, I loved uh, what what Eric had just said about like pipeline brand or feature enhancement. Yeah. Um, I think that really resonates and looking for those people that can help with pipeline um, and then brand and then uh, uh, feature enhancements as we try to get uh, more product and engineering put behind uh, the importance of third party integrations. Yeah. That's one of the things that I, I've really noticed, like the biggest, home runs are when you can kind of do the the full stack partnership where you can say, okay, we're not just going to say this is a tech partner. We got an integration. Great. Check it off. Let's do an integration. Let's use that to kick off some co-marketing brand type stuff together. Let's use that to generate leads that we can do some co-selling together. Right. And yeah. you're kind of, and then we're going to be able to service these people, you know, with some ways with agencies internally where you're, you're able to, because I think it's like even, even partner people who have to play all these roles it could be easy to sort of silo. Okay. I'm, I'm doing tech partner stuff now, and then I'm doing, you know, service partner, and then I'm going to do some co and like bringing that all together and trying to layer those things. Then you're getting multiple, you know, with every shot, you're getting multiple targets hit at the same time. That's like when the real magic starts to come together. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you're spot on and trying to evaluate and build an ecosystem really of partners that, um, enhance what we're doing here at Wonderkind. Were, were you in partnerships before this role? Yeah. Uh, Stuart actually was my first partner meeting um, back when I was working at List Track and he was at Swell. And yeah, it was in New York City. So uh, a few years I've been, I've been doing this thing. That's awesome. That's Stuart's awesome. got the magic. Uh, he, um, yeah. We were talking earlier that he's 
he brings so many people together. He's got the the DNA uh, partnerships DNA he inside really him. Really does. It's like it's like a secret. It's like a secret network because every time I'll be talking to someone, and then it turns out they're like, "Oh yeah, well actually, uh, Stewart's the one that pulled me." And I'm like, "This th th keeps adding up the number of people." He's you've got your influence. We gotta call it like a dark social, like I don't know, dark dark social Stewart network something. There's something going on there. <laughs> he's um, very influential. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so, the Stewart, Allison, right? as we as we bring it home. Uh, any, any, like, I would love to know, I don't know, like what's, um, you pick either a big learning that you're still trying to figure out right now, an unanswered question or something that you've learned that you want to share. Oh, that's so good. Put you right on the spot. I know. Yeah. I know this has been like a hot topic on LinkedIn lately, but the integrations doesn't equal partnerships, uh, conversation and everything that has come from that. Um, I think as a tech pro working for a tech provider, um, you know, a, a lot of people think that there's an integration, there should be a partnership and, and that's just doesn't need to be the case and, and often isn't. So I think that's one of the biggest learnings that I'm still working through and that I also like to, to pass on to others. So maybe I can hit both of your questions at once. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Uh, much, much appreciated. Hey, thanks for, uh, for being willing to pop up on stage, put up your hands. I uh, love it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Allison. Hey, and thanks to everybody for uh, for joining us for this uh, session. Um, Will, what's the status? Are we sharing the uh, the maturity model itself right now? Where where is that available? Yeah, so tell them where they can find the model. Yeah, the the we raw data both. is available in the Google Sheet, um, which I can link in the chat. And we are summarizing all of that and putting it onto a web page so that it's easy to consume as well as a downloadable. And that'll be coming early next week. So have a look out for that. Here is the Google Sheet for you to, if you wanted to add in your thoughts, if you haven't yet, then you can squeeze them in. Um, but yeah, we're going to be early next week with that resource and you'll get an email, everyone who attended today. I appreciate it, everybody. Uh, thanks to uh, to Jared, um, Al, Kevin, Stuart, Annette, and then of course to Eric and uh, Allison who joined us here impromptu unplanned and everybody who is uh hanging out in the chat enjoying uh enjoying this first friday with us go uh Heck go yeah. get a i don't know if it's happy hour yet if you're on the west coast maybe not yet but go get a you know <laughs> go get a happy hour drink and uh enjoy the weekend have a good weekend everyone see y'all